Hello, and welcome to Crushing Classical, redefining a thriving classical music career. Today's hot seat is the part two of the hot seat episode we already did with freelance horn player Andrew Seaman. Andrew emailed me a few days after we recorded the last hot seat with a decision on what he wants to do in his career. And now you get to hear what he chose on this hot seat episode as he gets guidance from Eileen for the next moves to make. This was a great talk, so I'm not going to yammer on right now. Let's just get started. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. I'm fine. Good. So, Tracy, do you want to introduce this, or do you want to say anything about it at all before we dive in, or no? Well, Andrew... Andrew wrote back with his decision, and so um, Eileen said, hey, let's get Andrew back on the hot seat so we can talk about it. Yeah, so that's, so that's what, yeah, that's what we're here for. So, okay, so um, Andrew, you, you, so you decided you definitely want to perform, so I'll let you say a little bit about, because I, I, I realize we got your email and everything, but I'm interested in just, if you could tell the audience what the decision was that you made would be great. So the choice was sort of between performing and honestly a lot of other things from last yeah. week. Yeah. Um, I decided to go more full towards performing because honestly that's what I get the most enjoyment out of. And I was thinking about it as I was sort of getting ready for my recital, which is actually tomorrow, which uh, oh, this, wow. won't, this won't go up until much later than that. But uh, um. I just really, really enjoy performing, and that that, uh, that honestly just changes how I feel about music compared to teaching or teaching anything of that sort. Got it. Okay. And when you say performing, can you be more specific? So, it, like, if you could declare, you know, what would the outcome be? You know, your, I mean, and, and I, when I say outcome, I mean, what do you really want? Not what will you settle for, but what do you really want? Uh, I'll be honest, what I would love to be able to do as a solo career, but I also realize how difficult that is. <laughs> um, this is so interesting, too. Um, and I get what you're saying because, and, and Tracy, by the way, feel free to chime in on this. Cause I know you have opinions about this. Um, <laughs> I know you do. Um, it is so, uh, normal for a classical musician to say, I would love to have a solo career, but mm -hmm. it's so normal because, mm -hmm. because there really is this perceived barrier of entry to being a soloist. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Just there's a perceived and, and this is what I want you to get. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, you know, you know, I, I've said a hundred times how old I am on this. You guys are probably going to know how old I am every year because I keep on saying it. So I'm <laughs> 42 and I'm not embarrassed about it. So I'm 42 and I can tell you that if it, if I, and, and, I, and I can say this coming out of when I was coming out of college myself, uh, way back when, um, I wanted the same thing. I wanted a solo career. And mm -hmm. I really saw no possible way for that to happen. Social media did not exist. Um, you know, being able to build your own website was a very difficult thing to do. WordPress didn't exist. Joomla didn't mm -hmm. exist. Um, all these different platforms, you know, uh, you know, calling, calling up GoDaddy and saying, hey, can I get a template drag and drop website? Uh. <laughs> that They didn't have those. Like that wasn't available. Um, so the, the idea of being able to promote yourself, it was expensive. You had to do it through the yellow pages. You had to do it through radio. You had mm -hmm. to do it through newspaper. I mean, that was, those were the options. The internet was brand new. It was, you know, barely getting started when mm -hmm. we were coming out and the, the World Wide web was not anything like it is today. So I can honestly say that when I came out of school, there really the option of becoming a soloist was I mean, you had to be like Joshua Bell. Right. You had to be, you know, signed at a young age, you had to be a prodigy, you had to be playing the a string string instrument or or the mm -hmm. piano. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. or the piano, one of the two. You really, you know, anything else was you were born into it or, you know, I don't know, you, some record producer heard you play a solo mm -hmm. and said, I want to sign you. I mean, that's really how it was. Mm -hmm. You don't have that problem anymore. 
Mm -hmm. That problem does not exist for you anymore. That world or that, that, that preconceived thing you have right now comes from the past. That comes from when Tracy and I were coming up. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Do you get that, that the condition that I'm talking about from back when we were growing up doesn't exist anymore? Yes, I, I do get that. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. I, now, well, what would stop you then, for real, what stops you then from thinking that a solo career is possible for you now? Um, I mean, the only thing is just uh, thinking to a bunch of friends of mine who have kind of started to attempt the same thing and have run into a lot of difficulties. Okay. But, but then again, when I also think about it, I haven't encountered those difficulties. I think more because of a combination of dumb luck, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's possible. Well, and here's what I'll say, too, is that I would, I would bet that the people you've seen try this have mm-hmm. gone about it in a very traditional way. So they're looking. Yeah. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it the permission route. Mm-hmm. They've taken the permission route. So, you know, I'm going to go to um, a conductor, or whatever, of some orchestra or whatever. Or I'm going to do it the quote unquote legitimate way. And I'm mm-hmm. going to, you know, audition through 40, you know, 30 or 40 competitions until somebody give, tells me that I'm a first prize winner and now I can be a soloist. Once right. again, that, that's the same that's the same conversation from back when Tracy and I were coming up. You got to get this. That conversation, you don't have to engage in that conversation anymore. You literally can create a solo career of your choosing. You can decide who you play with. You can decide what you play. You can decide, truly, you can create your own solo career right now. You don't even have to wait. You really don't. And that's what I want to talk to you about on this call. Okay. Is what would that look like? Let's make it real. Let's make it tangible. And and unfortunately, you didn't get to hear. Well, you will get to hear it. If, you know, when you're listening on your on the way to your gigs. But Tracy and I had a conversation yesterday where we uh, we actually talked about. We didn't talk about you, but we talked about this. This whole idea of, you know, I I, get, I, I threw a scenario out for her, and it was cool because she in the moment had to come up with how she would, if she wanted that career, how would she create it? Or she wanted, Mm -hmm. if she wanted to do that thing, how would she do it? That's what I want to do on this call is I want us to look and see, okay. Okay. So let's look and see what the assets and and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. Whenever you want to, whenever you want to do something, um, you want to look at, what assets do you have? Assets can be tangible. They can be intangible. They can be relationships you have that you can leverage. Mm-hmm. They can be um, conversations you've had in the past. Even if it's not a relationship, it could have been a conversation. But it's mm-hmm. enough to you know, it's enough to get you into uh, in further with a human being, somebody who mm-hmm. could make a difference. Um, it could be um, a concert you went to where you fell in love with that music and you were like, Oh man, it would be so cool to play this on the horn. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, so I want you to look and see what are some assets that you have? Cause let's say we're going to build a solo career from scratch on this call. Mm -hmm. Let's just play. Uh, okay. So maybe let's start with people. Sure. Let's do it. Um, just Thinking about it, um, I can name at least two people who have helped me out a great deal in the past okay. two years in regards to that. One is Dr. Martin Williams at UGA. Um, she's kind of helped me t- start doing maybe some of the traditional type of things, such as competitions, which I've placed at, um, and mm-hmm. like guided me in directions for music that's like good for competitions but maybe not also going to destroy my face so that you have that problem where you crack notes all the time because you're exhausted by the second piece (laughs) yeah and um the second would be akim reus um who i i've told tracy a little bit about him but um can you spell his his name for me just so i can write it down uh a a c h i m 
um, space R E U S. Okay, got it. Um, he. That's a cool name. Actually, yeah, uh, he lives in Athens too, and he used to be the first horn in the Stuttgart Radio Orchestra in the '80s and '90s. Oh, cool! But he moved to Athens because he wanted to start a restaurant. Okay. Um, cool. I love it. But uh, but he's good friends with basically every major horn player in all of the German orchestras, and okay. I'm gonna go meet a bunch of them in May. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So those are. Do you have anybody else? Anybody else come to mind? Uh, just right now, off the top of my head, no. Do you but, know anybody? But I might also. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I may also be just kind of thinking small or like very large scale instead of uh, small scale because you mentioned about conversations that I could potentially leverage. Yeah, um, they could be. And think about too people you know that know people in um, performing chamber groups, you know, like mm -hmm. chamber groups that are. You know, pe people, so in other words, you're, you're like one degree or two degrees of separation from somebody who knows somebody. That's also right. an asset. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Richard Dean, um, who's okay. the associate principal horn of the New York Philharmonic. Associate principal horn. And knows uh, all of these people in the New York Phil. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so you know me, and I know, and I know Tracy you. Bernard Scully. <laughs> yeah, Bernard and you know Bernard Scully. Scully. <clears throat> and Bernard, I don't know if you know him, but... Um, I, I've met him once. Okay. Oh, that's I, a really good point. I didn't even think about Tracy. Duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't, Tracy I didn't knows a bunch of people, too, right? Yeah. This yeah, is and so Bernard, um, on the interview, told us really detailed how mm -hmm. he decided to go, you know, a chamber music solo route mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of instead of continuing the orchestra route like he he kind of had it made in the shade with his orchestra career like at a young age he um he was in certain positions and um and then he was offered another position like he was doing a few one-year positions and then he had another opportunity to do some more of that um in another orchestra and that was when he had to decide what mm -hmm. he really wanted and he he so he navigated his career more towards solo and chamber after that and he studied mm -hmm. with um you know certain people mm -hmm. in order to make that happen so so that was that was really interesting to hear Here, here's how, another one tracy yeah. sorry to dive in sorry uh my interruption is just i don't want to forget um uh denise tryon <clears throat> she's doing that right now she's doing mm -hmm. that right now so uh, that's another person that you know tracy mm -hmm. um as far as like, you know, again, the degrees of separation deal, that's a really, that's an asset. I don't know if anyone realizes what an asset that is. You don't right. have to know somebody directly. You can know somebody who knows somebody and you can connect it's that way. Asset. You know, like, I'll tell you something. I wanted to an interview the first, the moment I saw Black Violin on Facebook, I was like, I want them yeah. on my podcast. So I Facebook messaged them. They never got the message. They, they just don't go on Facebook very much, or maybe someone else is doing their stuff or, you know, they never saw the message or they didn't respond. And then the minute that I, 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 like the next day I saw that Black Violin worked with Giacomo Byros, who's a good friend of mine, and I interviewed him on my mm -hmm. first podcast. And I reached out to Giacomo and said, hey, look, I would really like to interview Black Violin. Is there any way you can introdu introduce me to them on an email? And he did that. And then the minute that I did that, literally they emailed me back first. Because once they had that connection of, oh, they she's friends with Giacomo, we love Giacomo. And he they replied before I got a chance to reply to the email. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Like, yeah, so it's a huge, like what Eileen is saying, it's huge mm -hmm. when you have someone that you know saying, you know, I know this person. So. Right. Yep. So that's what you're looking for first is your assets. Um, mm -hmm. hum human beings are the best asset you have. Um, I said this on uh, the Fireside Chat, which, you know, will come out on Sunday, but um, the, the greatest thing that you can develop is the skill to enroll. And what I mean by enroll is, um, enroll people in your in your idea. Enroll people in what you're up to. Enroll people in supporting you. Enroll people in like you literally have to be your own advocate. 
you have to be an advocate for yourself. It's the greatest skill that you can ever develop is because everything you want is on the other side of a conversation with a human being. You really can't get anything in this life without other human beings. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. And the better you get at um, enrolling other human beings in what you want to do and what you can do and what is possible and creating things and collaborating with them, that is where your future is. And it's not necessarily going to look like, you know, Andrew's standing in front of the New York Phil playing a solo. And what's great about today is it doesn't have to look like that. Right. In fact, the whole argument of crushing classical, I mean, this is me paraphrasing here. I don't think Tracy would say this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> the, whole, the whole argument of crushing classical is that whole thing where, you know, everybody shows up for an orchestra concert and there's a soloist and they're playing the traditional repertoire. That is dying. The whole mm-hmm. thing is just dying. And I actually would love to see you be part of creating the future. What is that going to look like now? That's what I'm inviting well, you to do by going through your assets. Mm-hmm. Well, well, right, because well, what Eileen is saying, sorry to interrupt again, but um, the the traditional way, there's not uh, – le- everyone everyone who's trying to do it is basically doing it the traditional way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, and, the, and the traditional way is which violin and piano soloists are going to be on the – schedule this year right Mm -hmm. it's it's so true (laughs) are we gonna have long long or are we gonna have you know that's what it is right that's what it is it's a rotating cast of violin and yes that's a rotating cast yes yeah you don't get you you're not gonna get um other instruments unless you know the only time is when they're when they're from the orchestra that they're mm-hmm. in at least here and yeah, they usually it's usually like oh we're featuring this person the you only know time as a I've treat. Ever, the only time i've ever seen the von williams tuba concerto is because of that reason you just totally. mentioned exactly <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and you know what to be honest it's a savings for the orchestra because when mm-hmm. they don't have to hire long long for you know eighty thousand dollars yeah. they, can, they can hire their first horn you know for right. whatever you know it's a lot less than that right so so that's what we're looking for here is what are those connections? So let's think about so now we know what now we talked about assets and I realized we didn't exhaust that conversation, but let's just right. let's just stop it there for a minute. Now I want you to think about what kind of a horn soloist do you want to be? Like what do you want to put forward? What do you want to represent? Like if you could be anything, and we're making this up, right? I don't I'm right. not looking for any I'm not looking for magic here. I'm just looking for what like ideas what do you think you'd want to be what do you want to represent um could you give me maybe a little more uh... yeah so um okay so i'm dating myself here but <laughs> one of the one of my favorite one of my most favorite memories when i was growing up was um we used to watch channel 11 a lot in chicago which is pbs mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. My parents had it on all the time. I can't remember why. It wasn't about the you know the phone drives, but it was about all the cool programming they had on. And one of the things I remember, it's, and it's the thing I remember the most, was when I think of Wynton Marsalis, who obviously played trumpet, when I think about him, I think about that what he represented was he was always pushing, he was always trying to push jazz and education forward and what he and yet he was his own like he was a soloist he was a you know I think about the career he had at the time and and he but there was an agenda and it was a really phenomenal agenda so you didn't just get this great player you got this guy who was um, pushing forward education and music for kids especially in the inner city mm-hmm because that's where he grew up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Um, So it's like, you know, and I'm not saying you have to have an agenda, but there's something magical about those two things coexisting, because I think that's what so much worked for him. Right. You know? Um, Okay. So just maybe thinking about it, um, 
one what kind thing of music would you want to play? You know, what, um, you know, what do you want to represent? Uh, what I honestly really love doing is uh, playing f- like traditional folky type, folk song-ish types of stuff because both my wife, wife and myself are from uh, Kentucky, her- herself being from very rural Kentucky, and so she's influenced me um, in a lot of like early music education, Appalachian folk song type of stuff that I really love playing. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, do you know John Jacob Niles at all? I don't, but uh, tell me more. Um, He's a dulcimer, well, I'm I'm probably going to get this wrong, I think dulcimer mandolin player who uh, used to play in Kentucky. Uh, He wrote a lot of, like, traditional songs sort of in the vein of maybe... Uh, Pete Seeger, um, like folk songs that we think of from like the 30s, 40s, okay. sorts of those sorts of things that I that I really really do love. Okay, and what do you love about them? Um, they're they're simple and easy to latch onto, but the message of them is actually usually fairly complicated. Okay, which, can you give me an is, example? Uh, off the top of my head, no. <laughs> I'm okay, sorry. so when you say when you say complicated, is it like there's a story behind it? Is it there's uh, a is there a, some, is there like a lesson behind it or something? Yeah, yes, uh, a lesson behind them. Okay, and so can you give me an example of what one of the lessons might be? It doesn't have to be exact, but can you give me an idea? Um, so I think if I can think of that. <laughs> um, okay. I know it's on the spot. It's really not dude. about you getting it right. It's more about. Um, um, as we're exploring this, if I understand it more, I can direct you better, you know? What the heck? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. yeah, he... Sorry, I'm, I'm really trying to think. I cannot think of anything. That's okay. Um, so, so, but there's a lesson in the story, though. Yeah. So there's yeah. some... Okay. So it's like a folk song, and it has meaning, and there's a lesson mm-hmm. in it. Yes, um, think like uh, 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 Dylan, um, Tangled Up in Blue sort of songs, but earlier than that. Okay. If, if that gives maybe a help. Okay. So if, so as an example, let's say that you were to, let's say this is one genre that you could explore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as being a soloist goes. And let me ask you this. What audience... Think about all the different audiences you could have. Who would be the audience for that? Um, potentially uh, more rural-based uh, kids and audiences. Okay. And like uh, Central Southern, um, middle, maybe Middle America is what we would think of it as. Okay. You know, can I? I need to chime in on this because this is Please so do. cool. Um, uh, the North Carolina Symphony did this tour uh, about like you know, eight or nine years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, how old is my daughter? It, like seven <laughs> or eight years ago. Yeah. And um, it was called Blue Skies, Red Earth. And it was mm-hmm. all about Appalachian music, like you're talking mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. and this folk thing. And you know, I think it was they they didn't realize how successful it will be it would be. And um it it was amazing. And they didn't do enough with it. Like they could have mm-hmm. they could have when we were when we went to Asheville, it was standing room only sold out. Wow. And they and I've never seen the people this excited to see the North Carolina Symphony. And it was all music from Appalachia. And mm-hmm. it was they had like a Native American playing this like wooden flute and Mm-hmm. And they had all this folk music, like what you're talking about, with like a storyline or a message mm-hmm. or some kind of lesson. And a lot of times it was about the earth and just the tradition. And I I saw that the audience was just really tuned into that, you know, just being from that area and that right. that whole kind of idea. And I've never seen people go that crazy over the North Carolina Symphony. It was actually really moving. It was the first time that I saw people, like, I felt like I was playing a rock concert. Yeah. <laughs> Are you almost. serious? I didn't and know about this. That's the coolest I, thing ever. It, it was so cool. And actually, afterwards, I went up to the CEO of the thing, and I was like, dude, you guys screwed up because you should have, like, you should have had cameras. You, I mean, they knew that this this concert was going to be this sold out in Asheville in the mountains. They should have, like, done a high-quality 
recording of it. They should have sold DVDs of it. They should have, you know, they should have maximized what they had produced, but instead they completely let it go. And then they tried to recreate it in a different way by going, doing an Eastern tour and calling it blue skies, golden sands. And they focused Mm. on beach music, which it it just didn't have the same vibe. There's something about the mountains. There's something about that tradition Mm -hmm. because you're mixing it in with like, like honoring mother earth and like native American people that, you know, I don't know. It was just, there was so much, there was so much energy there that well, was really amazing. And you know what and- it is? You know what it is? It's so great to hear the story. You know what's so great about this is um, this is about finding a hungry audience. And let me tell you what's mm-hmm. so interesting about mountain people is they are very fanatical about being mountain people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're incredibly, the, the best audiences you can find are the fanatical ones. No joke. So that's why, mm-hmm. that's why jazz is such a great, genre because there's fanatics about jazz and there are different types of jazz so you've got these little sub niches of really fanatical people about certain things and that's why the Appalachian concert hit the because they went to the mountains and performed it they they went to where the hungry audience is and said hey guys here's your music and everybody showed up yeah, mm-hmm. it's not hard to find an audience when you are playing a genre that they want to hear that's what's so interesting about classical music right now is that no one's really getting that. It's not that there's something wrong with yeah. classical music. It's not that there's something wrong with Mozart. It's that we're not matching genre with audience. And we're not thinking about that there are subsets of audience. That's why I'm telling you, you can have a solo career now. Because if you think of this in terms of audience, all you need to do is figure out what genre you want to play and who's fanatical about it and put it together. And you've got yourself a career. It's the most entrepreneurial thing you can do, yet for some reason, classical music has gone this way of, we're not going to be entrepreneurial, we're going to wait to get jobs, and we're going to wait to get permission. That would, That's a construct, that's a framework that comes from years past that we don't have to live in anymore. Right. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. You know? So the truth is that mm-hmm. you could create a, I'm, I'm just going to, you know... Um, with, for lack of a better way of saying it, you could create a um, part of like a piece of a solo career. It doesn't have to be the whole thing, obviously, but you could create, you could really create yourself as a very incredibly loved and popular Appalachian genre soloist. And it, I mean, there mm-hmm. could be horn, there could be percussion, there could be, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what all the, I'm not familiar with Appalachian music. I'm from the city. Um, Yeah. So I I really don't know anything. I like know nothing about it, you know, Um, but, but I think it, you know, there's so much that you could do with that. So that's one Mm -hmm. angle. And and so Tracy, thanks for telling me about that. I mean, I didn't know about that concert. That's really cool. It was one of the best things that ever, that I ever experienced in the North Carolina symphony, really. When was it? It was, it was was in like spring of 20. um, Let's see. Like it was like 2009, maybe, or no, maybe eight. Wait, are you have telling to look me, it up. So you're telling me they haven't done it since? No, they haven't done it. You're anymore. joking. <laughs> you're joking. Oh. You're joking. Well, the guy that, um, it, that it was his idea. He left the orchestra. He was the, you know, the, the general manager. He is no longer the general manager. So yeah. You're kidding. So, what, so the guy leaves and so does the idea. Yeah. Let's have a uh, round of applause. Think- Woo! Good job, guys. <laughs> Woo! And here's what. Here's something else. You know, they probably think it's already been done once, so um, they shouldn't do it again. Right? All right. That's yeah. right. Because, you know, because Ar- because, Aerosmith, because Aerosmith didn't play the same concert on a world tour for, you know, three years. <laughs> Because <laughs> nobody wants to hear it. For 40 years. Right? Come on. Right? Yeah. It's just, it, the whole thing is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. you got to think about it, how stupid that is. It is. It was a, I think it was mm-hmm. a wild success. I mean, we. I was I was actually, to be honest, I was moved to tears when that when I played that concert. Like, I, I really was. I was like, this is phenomenal. I've never seen anything like it in an orchestra concert. And I'm sure the, I'm sure the mountain sure people are like, what did we do wrong? They haven't been back. Why aren't they back? 
for real. I mean, come on. Like, wouldn't you be thinking that? Um, they came once and we loved it and they didn't come back. What did we do wrong? Right. Should we, have, should we not have worn overalls to the concert? What did we do wrong? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm just saying. It's just, it's kind of stupid that it was that popular and they're not bringing it back. So anyway, you, you get the, you know, you get the whole, I, I just love to make yep, fun. I, I, I love to make fun mm-hmm. of stupidity. It's just what it is. Um, okay. So, so that's one. Okay. So that's one genre. Is there anything else that you would love to play? Like any, um, anything you fall in love with, you've heard, you've anything. I mean, I'll be honest. Um, it's cliche for any classical music musician to say, but I really love playing Mozart. (laughs) Um, Mozart specifically, like maybe Mozart and modern, modern modernish music. Um, I've played a lot of late romantic stuff and I'm maybe just a little bit burnt out on it right now. <laughs> okay. So then, okay. So, and, and obviously Mozart's a little harder, right? Cause we're looking for a audience. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. obviously, so that would be a more traditional route. Now it's possible that you could, um, I don't like the word modernize, but I'm going to use the word modernize. <laughs> it's possible that you could modernize Mozart. I think one of the things that I, really appreciated was when we were uh, when Tracy posted those videos from black violin, their recent yeah. concert. Mm-hmm. And there was, uh, uh, well, I, I just played with them. So I, I know all about it. Yeah. And th- what I really love about them is that they've taken a modern spin on very popular tunes mm-hmm. that people actually know. Yeah, like the DJ was mixing Vivaldi. Yep. Like yep. he was, he, he mm-hmm. put like one of the four seasons on and then he was like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you, cause you asked me like, what's the DJ is the coolest when you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it, w- when we played with him too, we did like a, basically a remixed version of uh, Brandenburg and Sharon number three, which oh, was fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> What if you what if you found someone to arrange some of that um, like Appalachian style music or you know I don't yep. it is Appalachian style and conduction yes it, yes it is and you could you could like quote Mozart in there or something mm-hmm. and it was like I, I have a friend who, I have a friend who uh, play who's from Brazil clarinet player who's fantastic who does that when he's doing improvisation is. Um, Sometimes if he realizes, oh, this is in B-flat, and this lick from uh, Stravinsky is in B-flat, he'll just play the whole lick yeah. while he's improvising. People yeah. wonder, how the hell did you do that? Right? <laughs> That's cool. And the other, thing too, cool. the other thing, too, I think is interesting is, um, and I don't know if anyone's doing this or has done this. I haven't really kept up on it, but this whole idea of... Um, that music came from people like, you know, Mozart and Beethoven, like where it came from was, you know, Mm -hmm. the music of today came from them. And I think it would be interesting for people to, uh, you know, you know what this, what, where I'm, where I'm getting this from, like where this is sort of sourcing right now is, you know, the musical Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Um, and do, do you guys know anything about Hamilton at all? I, I only know about it because I saw a segment. I have not seen the show, but I saw about I saw a segment about it on, I believe it was CBS Sunday Morning. I think uh-huh. I saw that segment too. Did you see it? Uh, yeah, it's ringing a bell. Yeah, yeah did, did you get bell. to see it at all, uh, Andrew? Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it. I have friends who play the soundtrack constantly. Okay, yeah, the soundtrack's um, great, and but what was what was yes. really cool? What was I mean? I, and by the way, I wasn't aware of it until my brother told me about it. My brother, um, he's into musicals very much, and he does he does direct shows and community theater my, and whatnot. My sister and, is too. Yeah, and of course, you know, everybody would go, "Well, Eileen, you know, how would you not know about Hamilton? What are you talking about? It's like the biggest deal." Well, the thing is, if you don't run in those circles, you don't know about it. That's just the way that is, and so. But I learned about it because of CBS, and I try and you know stay up on what's going on, which is why part of why I watch sixty Minutes and CBS Sunday Morning because I want to see what's going on. And so, but what was interesting about it though is I was really surprised at the um, what the content was, and it relates to where I'm going with this. Um, it was about the founding fathers and 
Um, they actually, you know, there were characters, you know, the different characters from that time period and, you know, what got created at that time that turned into, you know, what we have today. Uh, there's really, what would be really interesting is a show, I'm going to call it a show, it could be a, you know, performance or whatever, that does the same thing, except there's, you know, Mozart, and there's Beethoven, and there's, and I realize all these people lived at different times, there's Wagner, there's, <laughs> and I know that there's different time periods, right? But um, what would be interesting is to create a, and, and, and it could have a solo component or solo components to it, mm -hmm. because certain instruments were brought out at that time. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain composers brought out more horn than trumpet or more trumpet than tuba or more tuba than percussion. And you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just strings. It wasn't just piano. There mm -hmm. were, there was a, there was very, you know, it's when like the, the great Renaissance of woodwinds started to come out in music, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. to I'm totally like making this up here, but you get what I'm saying. There's a, if you look at what people are, people are yeah. loving. I, I like to look out in the world and say, everybody loves Hamilton. What is it about Hamilton they love? It's not just the music. The music is great, yes. But there's a story that they're in love with. So, so much right. about what can be created is created in the story. Even the Appalachian idea is about a story. It's about a fanatical audience mm -hmm. that's in love with the stories of that time, of that you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what you're mm -hmm. looking when you're trying to create something new. It's not about following how it's always been done. It's about looking at what's being done now that people are in love with mm -hmm. and using that to as a catalyst for creating what do, what is your career going to look like that you, like you can create that same and and listen modeling is the best way to do it i like to model what's already working you don't have to even come up just look out in the world and look at what people are in love with what are people crazy about what are people fanatical about and how could that be recycled or recreated into something that could be an income stream for you, an income source for you, something that you love to do and something that they love to hear. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Does anything come to mind when I say all that? Tracy, if you have anything, um, feel free to add. Just, uh, I was just going to... Oh, go ahead, Andrew, first. Oh, I, I was thinking, um, do you know Anna Meredith at all? Um, she is more famous right now for being a pop musician, but she... He was a, well, I guess still is a British composer and whatnot, and was like a composer in residence at the BBC Scottish Symphony. Okay. And she started, she started incorporating like electronic um, influences into her work, sort of similar to like a mm -hmm. rave and dance club type of tracks. Yep. And she just performed at South, uh, uh, South by Southwest, uh, oh, wow, I, I guess really? maybe two weeks ago. Wow. And, mm -hmm, and she's big. been like raving out by NPR and a bunch of other music outlets that I follow. So it was basically like, was uh, like <laughs> so she was taking, because everybody loves that rave, not everybody, but there's a very strong subset <laughs> of the audience that loves the rave, um, mm -hmm. right, the, the rave electronic movement. There's people who love that. And, and, and actually, you know who loves it is the millennials. Let's be clear. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're crazy. No, I know it. a lot of people who that's all that they listen to. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all that they listen to. And actually, including, including, go ahead. Oh, and including classical musicians who I'm friends with right now. There you go. Really? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tracy, what were you going to say? Do you want to add something? Well, I was just going to say before that, Eileen, the way you were describing it, um, you know, looking for what's popular now and going with that and seeing how you can create something for an audience that, or, an audience similar to that just makes me think of not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Like you're looking out in, in the world right. today and saying, what is working now? There what are, are people loving? There are clues everywhere. And yeah. if you're not looking out in the world, you are lost. You don't look in the past for, right. how to, for classical music is not in the past. And the way it's been done is not the way it's going to be done. The way it's, if you just look around you, there are clues everywhere. What people love what people will buy. People are paying ridiculous ticket prices for Hamilton. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Insane. No, I know. It's like, right. it's like 200 
percent more than any other Broadway tickets right now. Yeah, <laughs> is that right? I mean, it's a, it's God. a musical. Yeah, no, it's, for it's, so it's, a musical. <laughs> it's a musical. It's a musical. You know what I mean? Like, there's a huge buzz about it. Huge buzz. Huge. I mean, the, mm-hmm. he's and and what's so funny about it is when I heard about what the content was, I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, uh. it's basically about the founding fathers, really. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. I mean, yep. really, because I thought to myself, um, I don't know if I want to go see this show because I have this whole thing about I hate history. And I mean, you know, that yeah. just, I, I'm seriously, that comes from me being a really kind of shitty student. Let's just be clear. But, but it doesn't uh, matter. My, but my point is, I mean, seriously, that's the kind of stuff that I was like, yawn. Can we please learn about something interesting? I mean, that's, that was me in school all the time. Yeah. Like that was, yeah, that was my life. But but at the same time, it really surprised me that people loved the show that much. It was it was about history. It's about the history of the U.S. financial system, right? <laughs> Not, I mean, like but, but I mean, like it's dull. about it's that time period, though. You know what I'm saying? It's about that time period. That's what killed me about it. When I say the founding fathers, what I mean is it's about that time period. That mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it is about the financial system, but it was about a time period that we all like. That, that most of us yawned through in, in school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I know. And now people are like, I'll pay $500 to go. Exactly. I mean, that's my uh. point. I mean, how, how, how this guy managed to resurrect, uh, you know, the most boring period, basically, uh, you know, in, you know, I, like, I don't, it's amazing. And, and it's p- partly because it is, you know, interesting to hear about the financial system and how it got created. But, but I think, you know, it speaks to when you put a story around something and you put great music with it, and you, like people will come. Mm-hmm. And this is what I think the, you know, the classical world is really missing is this point of view that we're talking about. And so right. what, what's my whole point? I want, I don't want you to wait until someone gives you permission. I'm imploring you actually, that you don't wait until someone gives you permission, that you don't wait to win another five competitions, that you don't wait for a damn thing to start a solo career, whatever that looks like for you, because you can have it now. You don't have to wait for it. It sounds great. Does that make sense to you? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Tracy, do you want to add anything to that? I just think that's awesome. It is. You know, because when we first started this conversation, I thought, gee, you know, Andrew, um, I don't know if you've looked at like. The, uh, I, I, you know, oh, I have. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that there's only been violins and pianos. So, well, the, the yeah. only reason that I even thought that I could do this is because earlier in the month, I somehow won a competition against literally it was myself on horn and everyone else was playing piano. Yeah. Wow. And I have, n- I'm still not sure how I want it, but uh, <laughs> it yeah. made me think that oh, maybe I can do this. <laughs> well, and I think I think what's interesting about this too is that I think the conversation for classical music right now is it's all about obstacles. What what we can't do, mm-hmm. what we need permission to do, what people will allow us to do. Um, like yep. we have to be anointed somehow before we can um, get in front of an audience. That's just not true anymore. You find right. you find yeah, your okay. audience. You create the venue. You it's very entrepreneurial. That's part of the reason why I'm here. Mm-hmm. It's very entrepreneurial, and my whole life, you know, for 15 years has been entrepreneurial. It's all I know. All I know is creating what I want. That's all I know. I don't. I'm not looking for a job to give me, you know, a paycheck and security and health insurance and all that. I mean, all those things are nice and they're certainly necessary. But um, I know that I want the freedom to be able to create it myself, my way, the way I want it to look. And I want, I, I'm encouraging, strongly encouraging classical musicians, you guys have that same opportunity. You just, you know, you guys are stuck in a way of thinking that comes from a long time ago. Right. You've, yeah. You haven't looked around to see the world has changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, in in the the whole education system is geared towards keep your head down. Yep. You know, practice your the the music that we say you have to practice. Yep. Don't don't learn anything else. And the most mm-hmm. important thing is that you don't miss notes, right? Because if you miss notes, <laughs> you don't have a career. And then that's <laughs> that's it. You know. Yep. That's it. And that's where the polite stuff comes from too. Because if you go, oh well, um, you know, 
if I miss notes, but if everyone likes me, then it'll be okay because they'll overlook like that I missed a note and they like me. So it's okay. Everything's okay if everyone likes me and I'm just going to be polite, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you stuck and it keeps you in a place where you can't be yourself. And that's what I don't like about it. Right. Yeah. And that's actually, that's why I started asking you about, you know, what have you seen? What are you interested in? Whatever. And, and you were the one who brought up mm-hmm. the whole thing about, you know, rural Kentucky and Appalachia and the mountains and all that, that mm-hmm. was already in you. And that's, what's interesting about this is there's something already in you, whoever, like whoever's listening to this, there's something already in you that you haven't considered yet. It's already there. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't give you that. You brought that to the table yourself. So many options. So I hope that I I really do encourage you. And I really do hope that you will start on this path now. Like you can, you absolutely can. Right. And, and don't forget how well North Carolina symphony did in the mountains. Don't forget about that because Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I don't know what they sold tickets for, but I bet they did very well. Mm -hmm. I bet they did very well. So that's that. Any other comments, questions, complaints, anything? <laughs> Let's hear it. Concerns. Concerns. <laughs> um, I'm. I don't think so. Um, I, I definitely think I could start, like, begin starting something over the summer. Oh yeah. Um, I'm. I'm a little busy until uh, May. <laughs> Sure. But uh, yeah, definitely over the summer, I could definitely start something potentially with my wife, who plays a lot of music in that, in those styles too. Great. In addition to everything else, she's a pianist. And, oh, perfect. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. And you know what I'll say too is um, you, you're making a really good point, which is you know, and I know how busy you are because it's really hard to get you on a call. But um, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. I know how busy you are, but. The other thing I'll say too, when you want to do something new, you have to have space in your life for it. You have to actually create Mm -hmm. space in your life for it. You have to step back and carve out room. Um, A lot of people, there's things they want, but they can't have them because their quote unquote life is too full. That's a real thing. That's a real phenomenon. Like they've filled their life with activities, leisure, school, work, whatever. And there's literally no room. You really do. If you want to create something new, you have to create space in your life for something new to show up. And nothing new will show up until you do that. Okay. So just remember that. So when when it's time, when that, you know, when May rolls around, calm, you know, turn the dial down so that you can open up, like, right, open room for it. Right. You don't have to wait till 2018. You don't have to wait till 2019. You have to wait till 2020. You just don't. Right. You can start it now. So I hope that you do that. That's my hope for you. I hope so too. Um, it, it, it'll naturally die down because uh, most orchestras and places that I get gigs from uh, stop calling once it's about May 15th. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then you'll yeah. be done with school for the yeah, summer. Yeah, and school's done for the summer. Good. Mm-hmm. That'll be welcome. How much longer do you have left in school? Yes. So it, it, there, there's a whole long thing um, that I didn't get into in that email, which would have made it even longer. But I'm going to do a doctorate for a number of reasons, including um, health insurance for myself and my wife because of how volatile it is in this country. Mm-hmm. And both of us have to be on it is all I'll say. Um, and UGA is very, very, very good that... Um, If both or one of you has health insurance, the other one can benefit, sort of like an employee insurance type of thing. Okay. And so I'm going to, but most of my requirements for my DMA are already done because I've taken a lot more classes in my master's than most people would do (laughs) for a performance degree. Okay. So I actually would have more time starting next semester than I have for the past two years. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. All right, good. So there's some benefit. And again, you know, you have to make decisions mm-hmm. according to what your needs are, what your, you know, I get all that. Mm-hmm. That's completely fine. Um, mm-hmm. Just, you know, remember to, you know, always, especially if you want to do anything in the solo realm. Um, oh, I know. Just got to make room for it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, good. I can't Sweet. wait to hear from you. I hope that, um, you know, we're going to, 
we're, we're probably going to be starting another series, which I, I'm not going to say it on here, but um, it's almost going to be like, uh, I don't know, like a, Tracy, what do we call it? It's like a, we, we get to go back What's and, now? yeah, we get to go back and talk to people who, um, like we've talked to on the podcast already and see where they are. It's actually really, because, because that's really, it's, right. one, it's one thing to talk to somebody in a moment in time, but it's even more interesting when you talk to them like three months later, or six months later, where are they? What have they created since then? Yeah. And I, and I follow the people, like all the people that I've interviewed already and their lives are changing so much all the time because they're, they're doing new things and different things and, uh, it's just cool. So yeah, the what's working now, I think is what we're yeah, going to What's it. working now. That's right. right. So good. Well, I'm, I hope we're going to have you on an episode of what's working now. In fact, would, in fact, I'll be disappointed be if we don't. No pressure. <laughs> 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 no pressure andrew no biggie thanks <laughs> andrew, this is so great because people that are listening can can start to see through what you've shared today how there's things in their own life that they probably haven't even thought of that could work in, right. in their careers you know like like eileen said we didn't say hey do you like appalachian music like that never would have occurred to <laughs> right <me before>. no <laughs> you know? right like and it's it's so cool. And when you said that, then I remembered that tour and it was, I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. it's a great idea and everyone has something like that. Totally. And you may not even think of, that you have something like that, but you know, if you got in a conversation, you would find it. Yep. You know, right. that's what it's, that's what's so great about mm -hmm. talking to people about these things is, you know, the, the coolest things come out of it. Mm -hmm. So yes. awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, if everyone here who's listening um, loves what they're hearing, go write a review on iTunes at Crushing Classical or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crushing Classical. And if you would like to get yourself on a hot seat episode, please send us a message at Facebook or Instagram or wherever. So um, and we'll get you on. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.